G'day guys. I thought I would do a bit of a maybe tutorial. I'm going to just show you how I pack my bike packing setup. Um, might be useful for people who haven't done it before or planning their first for sort of fully self-sufficient bike packing type trip. Basically exactly how I set my bike up for the Copico. A week of off-road, mostly off-road bike packing. Um, yeah, so I'll go grab the bike, um, I need to take some stuff off it, and then I'll pack it up and show you how I do it. And at the end I can, I thought I'd give some sort of five mistakes that I've made with packing before on my sort of first bike packing missions, and hopefully you won't make those mistakes if it's your first one. Alright. So this is me bike. This is one of the aluminium Canyon Grails, one of the first one of the first generations they came out with. I'm running 650B wheels from Hunt that have a dynamo in them. So this is housing my dynamo stuff at the moment, um, which is why I keep it on there. So I think of bike packing bags, and I guess I'll preface this by saying I'm talking about bike packing, not bike touring. So there is a difference between more traditional pannier racks and with what I guess people would in a more modern sense term bike packing bags. Um, I would say bike packing bags are more designed to just strap onto existing parts of your bike without having to add specific um, frames to attach them and that's not universally true um, but that's what I sort of think of it as and I pretty much only use um, bags you strap to your bike that you could put on any bike and don't need specific mounts. So before I get roasted by all the OG bike tourers out there, yes I'm well aware that having rules about what you can and can't put on your bike is ridiculous. Obviously you can go bikepacking with panniers and you can go touring with bikepacking bags. I'm more just trying to separate people going on a long bike tour carrying heaps of luggage on panniers versus this bike packing type setup where it's much more minimalist and your load carrying capacity is way smaller. There are some brands now that are blurring the line between the two of those like Tailfin with their super lightweight kind of pannier system. At the end of the day, put whatever you want on your bike. It's more about the experience than what you have on your bike. I think of them in three way in three bags, three types. First is a frame bag. Now you can either get these in a full frame or half frame. I've only ever used a half frame because I like being able to use, um, still use your bottle cages. Um, and if you're using a full frame bag, you are giving up two of your bottle cages, which is something to consider. And often people who use full frame bags will then go for um, water bladders inserted into the frame, which I've never done. So, I'll put this on. Alright, so that's number one. The second bag I think about is the front, the bar bag, handlebar bag. You're either going to find ones that attach with like a, like a cradle or ones where the bag, bag attaches directly to the bars. Um, they each have their pros and cons. Andy had a, a um, cradle one and I had, I have, again this is a raffle one, which just attaches with this directly to the bike. The downside of this is that it's more of a hassle to take it on and off at the end of each day. It's not as accessible. Um, so I'll so hence why this ends up being the camping bag, end of the day bag. Um, whereas the cradle ones you are much quicker to get the dry bags on and off. So you can see you've got two that go over top of your bars. This goes round your stem, not your stem. Uh, I don't know what you call that, the head, head post, head set of the frame. Um, this can get... Uh, not tricky, it can get quite tight on your handlebars, trying to mount your bike computer, my, mount a GPS tracker if you have one, which is actually one of the reasons why I always use aero bars, because you get so much more like uh, bar space to actually mount, so I'll, I may put the aero bars on as well, I'll show you how I do that, but if you don't run those, you are going to find it really hard mounting like lights, GPS unit, 
this takes up a lot of space particularly if your bars are like wrapped as well it's harder to attach accessories to so I'll just attach that now um, I have hardly even packed this and you can already see it's starting to touch there so the more you pack this bag the more you're going to run into the fact you're not going to be able to put your hands on the drops and actually when it gets really packed it's really hard to change the gears because it hits the bag um, yeah when I first started I used to try and get these straps as tight up into the bars as possible but actually it's really annoying because you can't do this hand position if your bar is completely snug um, so a lot of bike bags have like a little foam wedge that that sort of hold it out from there a wee bit um, and you can see that I mean this is the real estate you've got to attach stuff two straps are already doing that if you want to run these extra bags that go here that's even more straps then there's let alone your head unit your lights GPS so yeah um, and last of all is the seat bag so those that would be the, the three main bags I means a lot of accessory bags you can add in and people end up doing um, but these are your three main ones again this is one from Rafa this is probably my least favorite of the bags that I have from them the only reason I have these is that I watched the GV Duro um, Lachlan Morden video um, and is what inspired me to even try bike packing at all and these are the bags he used and then they were on sale after that which is probably a smart marketing move from Rafa and yeah I just went and bought them and uh, yeah that's what got me into bike packing so I mean they're not perfect particularly this one it sways a lot and I don't particularly like it um, I really like the frame bag though and that bag's pretty good uh, but this one's really fiddly to attach the actual harness that holds the dryer bag but once it's on it's fine so I'll put that on quickly Gives people sort of a general idea. So the first thing I always think about is my sleep system. I try and think of that in like one unit. And the more of it I can get into here, the better. Um, so my first tip on getting uh, sleep stuff in is to get rid of all the stuff sacks. Stuff sacks are great, but because they are often round, they're not very space efficient. So, well, let me show you how I do that on the ground. So when it's a, when it's a double ended um, bar bag, the first mistake I made was trying to make it closed at one side and then stuffing it in, but it will pretty much always end up with a asymmetric bag. Um, when these are anchored here that really just doesn't work well with you sitting on your bars so my first tip is to have it double ended and basically push the whole thing through and then stuff it in at the same time that way and then do these up so what I do this is my tiny tiny one man tent and I lay it out So my first, my thing I do is I try and get as much of it inside the tent as possible. So, I get the tent. Grab the sleeping bag. My tent's pretty small and light, but my sleeping bag is definitely not. Um, and it's probably the one piece that I would upgrade maybe in future. Getting like a, a super light sleeping bag. Um, but as I talk about with my clothing, like my biggest fear bikepacking is getting too cold. I is by far my uh, brings me the most anxiety is the fear of getting too cold. And some people just never get cold and aren't stressed about that. But for me, that's it's always my thing. Um, so having a warmer sleeping bag for me, it's kind of like a security blanket thing. At the end of the day, you can always know you can get inside a warm sleeping bag. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, so I chuck the sleeping bag inside the tent. The other thing I tend to take is a sleeping bag liner. It just adds a little bit of warmth. 
and um, keeps your sleeping bag a bit cleaner. Um, so if you're getting in there filthy, your sleeping bag won't get as filthy. And sometimes with bike packing, you can't shower at the end of the day. So ideally you can, but sometimes you can't. So having a sleeping bag line is good. So I take that out, put that in as well. If you're getting, you can layer it, nest it as well if you want to put it in the sleeping bag. Some people would also put their sleeping mat um, in as well, and then it's basically one unit. You can roll it, like unfurl it when you're camping and quickly chuck it up, and that works super well if it's a bivy because it doesn't need to be pegged up. Um, the only reason I don't put my sleeping mat in there is that I don't want to put a hole in it by um, stuffing it really forcefully in the bag, so I'd rather keep that one a bit more protected in its stuff sack, and, but everything else I'm um, reasonably okay to chuck in here, so so now you've sort of got this big squishy unit. So what I do is I grab a handful of it, grab this, and just chuck it all the way through, which is a bit fiddly at first, but eventually it will go. Right. You can sort of get it roughly equally coming through. So even that's not that symmetrical, but you would basically could go sort of shimmying it to and fro until you get it pretty um, central. Um, so that's basically sleep system. The only parts that I, you obviously you're not gonna get in poles, if it has poles and pegs. Um, this goes in the frame bag. The only other parts of the sleep system, I've got this tiny pillow. Thermarest Neo Air Uber Light, which is relatively fancy sleeping mat. Um, yeah, just because it's so, this, this mat is so fragile, just because it's so light, that I really wouldn't want to chuck it in here, stuffing it that forcefully, really. Um, so I'll just roll this up. Yeah, I mean, like, look how small that is. Like, this, I, I really like. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of kit. It's amazingly, like, warm and insulating. And it's, yeah, I mean, these two, tiny. So for the seat pack, I do stuff that I don't really want to access over the day. But if you needed to, you could. Uh, so like extra layers, warm layers, all of my uh, off-bike clothes. So I tend to just take one riding pair of riding clothes and one pair of camp clothes. And the more pieces of clothing that can do both, the better. Um, so for that reason, I think like a one absolute essential is a lightweight puffer jacket, which can do both roles. Um, I would never bike pack without a lightweight puffer jacket in any season basically. Um, there's not that many times where you need to ride in one because you overheat so quickly but there were some days on the Copco when it was really wet that I wore it under my um, my Gore-Tex and it's yeah it's a lifesaver. Um, I often put I've got one of the, like a what is this Cedar Summit it's like a compressible dry bag I like to chuck all my clothes in here, just, this is waterproof, but just having like that extra reassurance that you will definitely have warm clothes to put on at the end of the day um, is really good. Warm and dry clothes. So I'll chuck all of my riding clothes in there and put that inside here. When it's fully packed, it won't pack to the end. So I'll often put um, smaller things that I can compress in. So I'll put my two 
other parts of my sleep system in because you can pack them because they're small down to the ends. I'll go get some typical riding gear that I would take. Um, <clears throat> I always ride in a base layer. I'll have a top. I always like the idea of like ride, doing bike packing in a t-shirt, but having the back pockets is just so indispensable that it's just a pain in the ass not having the pockets. You end up carrying so much food and extra stuff along the way that I don't know, just having a normal shirt, I think. As cool as that would be, uh, I can never do it. Um, I always ride in cargo bib shorts for that same reason. I have two by Rafa. Heaps of brands make them now, but these were just the first ones that I saw coming out at the time, and yeah, they changed like changed my riding experience, really, and I would, I would never go bikepacking without cargo, having cargo bibs on. Again, you can like put so much in there. You can ride with your phone, food, extra layers, whatever. So that's what I wear, plus uh, sock, random socks. Um, I would always, always take these Castelli um, arm warmers, which are like fleece lined. It just amazes me how much heat you lose through your through your arms and you put these on and it completely changes your um, like perception of temperature so these are great for like riding off in the morning and like quickly changing I'll always take a gilet as well a vest um, this is my Hope Root one again they're just like they're super light and small and really versatile um, I know there's some people that would argue just take one good jacket and then just take it on and off but I don't know it's like a as a roadie, I, I love gilets and arm warmers. They're just so versatile. So that would be like my day riding kit. Um, if it's really hot, I'll chuck the arm warmers and gilet like in this pack as well, but I'd often just ride with them in my back pocket. Um, I'm not a huge glove person, but I will always take some, some heavy gloves so if it's cold and wet. But generally I don't wear them because I'm always filming stuff. I need to be able to access my phone and stuff and having gloves on even if they're fingerless still I find it really annoying so I often won't wear them which is not great for my hands but yeah um, the other thing which I may or may not take is leg warmers leg warmers are much more of a pain in the ass and way less useful I think um, I have another piece of kit that basically doubles for that reason um, which I will, I'll go get them now. Uh, so this is my rain kit, which again, super important, I think, being that my biggest fear is getting really, really cold. Um, and this stuff is so good. I think investing in good rain gear, warm gear, is the best thing you could do. All of the other like super lightweight, super expensive kit doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. But having like really good kit you trust and is going to keep you alive and warm, perfect. I tend to go for really waterproof and super lightweight because I prefer layering rather than having like one massive, you know, tramping raincoat, which is so big and heavy that every time you put it on, you overheat. So, this is filthy. Um, this is, again, this is Rafa. I come off like I just buy heaps of Rafa, but this is really good. Um, it's like a pullover style. I like it because I find zips let water in. As much as they say that they're waterproof, they just let water in eventually. This is like a pullover, so it's got a small zip, and it's big enough so you can take this, um, on and off over your helmet with this undone whip this on it's like fully waterproof um, it will literally always keep me um, wet uh, sorry <laughs> it'll literally always keep me dry and I can layer a puffer jacket underneath it which I think is super useful so I always go for looser rain clothes for that reason so you can layer underneath them so that always goes with me 
These rain pants are from um, Ground Effect, which is a, a New Zealand brand. I got recommended these by on a forum, and they're awesome. I wore them all the time on the Coca Cola. They again completely waterproof, quite lightweight and light, so you don't overheat. And they're actually three uh, three quarter length, which is a, um, you look a bit dorky, but three quarter length is honestly so good because you can take them on and off without your shoes, having to remove your shoes, which is the biggest hurdle to you wanting to take on and off rain gear is the fact you have to remove your shoes to put on rain pants, which was just stop anyone doing it. But because these are three quarters, they can go over your shoes without them uh, taking them off. They don't hit your drivetrain, so you don't have to worry about snagging it on your chain rings. And because they're three quarters, they actually, you don't overheat as much as well, so that, <clears throat> chuck them on over my jeans. So you can see how how far these, um, they sort of just come over your knees. So they shield most of the stuff that's getting battered. I mean, I found basically, if you're getting really, there's like a lot of um, rain, your shoes are gonna get soaked no matter what you do. So I'm less concerned about them. They add a surprising amount of warmth too. So I find these are actually better than leg warmers because they can, you take them on and off. They do keep you surprisingly warm. So I use them even when it wasn't raining. Um, this is my puffer jacket that I take literally on every trip. It's from uh, Uniqlo. I got this in Japan. It's not like uh, specific for cycling or anything. It's just really light and small. And yeah, I can fit it under stuff. So for camp clothes, I always take Merino long johns, top and bottom. Um, and then I'll just literally have one pair of undies, a cotton t-shirt, and some shorts. And I'll often put the shorts on over top of the leggings, and socks, and warm socks. And that's it. So you're alternating between one pair of riding clothes and one pair of um, camp clothes um, you can yeah, you're not going to smell great at the end of a week long trip but you can rinse them in, in like the showers that you go to and stuff but yeah that is part of bikepacking is getting a bit stinky unfortunately um, so I would pack it this way take this Always pack it in like the order of the likelihood you think you're going to get it out. So camp clothes right at the bottom. I'm never putting these on on the bike ever because they need to stay completely dry. Long John, same. Um, Alright, so puffer jacket I'll put in. Is it quite bright? No, it's okay. Puffer jacket in. Gloves. Just for the sake of it, I'll chuck the gilet and arm warmers in, but I often would keep those accessible. <clears throat> Usually I will actually keep the rain gear separate to this. One, because it's obviously, it's often wet. But two, so it's really, really quickly accessible. Bit of extra in here which you can put more stuff in be wary that the more weight you put on the like uh, periphery the more it's going to sway so i once had to put my like dslr camera in here because of a rainstorm and it was really noticeable so where you pack your weight is also super important that you want the dense heavy stuff the most central on the frame so like battery banks tent poles uh water food, all of that stuff needs to be on the frame and not in the handlebar bag or the um, seat bag. So I'll just, see so yeah, I'll put the, I'll put the rain gear at the very end of this, but external to that extra dry bag, so that 
we separate the wets from the dries. I'm going to stuff that down. So that is sleep system and clothing all sorted. The next main thing is your repair kit. So that's the other big thing that you need to have sussed. So yeah, I've experimented with having it kind of like accessible in the frame bag versus other things. But what I've found is that the more accessible it is, the more likely you are to use it. So for stuff like chain lube, you want to have that accessible so you actually use it. Otherwise, you end up just tolerating a really dry, squeaky drivetrain. We got incredibly, um, yeah, incredibly squeaky and dirty drivetrains, and we're re-lubing a couple of times a day. So having that accessible is always good, along with your mini pump accessible if you need to add pressure to your tires. So in the end, I actually have used started using a um, one of these like sort of jerry can style ones with a screw top. One because it's sealed and waterproof so your stuff doesn't get wet. Um, and two because I can actually put it under, can you see there? Oh, I'll show you in a bit. You can put it under your down tube. Um, the down tube you can put a, on a lot of gravel bites you can put another bottle cage. I used to put a drink bottle down there, but you actually can't reach down whilst you're cycling and grab it. So it's actually, there's no point having it, um, a bottle there. And I've also found it's one of the dirtiest places of your bike. So your, your bottle and like the nozzle is getting coated with all sorts of shit throughout the whole trip. And then like, you're gonna go and drink on it. Just doesn't make sense. Putting this there, it's sealed, it's accessible. I think it's the perfect place to put your toolkit. So what I do, so yeah, uh, Two tubes always. I don't. These don't fit in here. Those will go in my frame bag somewhere protected. I'll usually put a plastic bag over them as well. You don't want them like friction on anything because if you get a hole in them, they're obviously it's a complete waste of time. Um, so yeah, I'll always take chain lube and some more tire sealant. Now I don't know. Depending on a few things, I'll take some patch kits in case you know, like you really have a nightmare. Uh, a mini pump, I don't bother with CO2s, they're not, um, if, it, if you like mess it up or something, you can't fly with them, like there's no point, just take a mini pump, it'll always work. I take, um, this is the tubeless darts, so you can actually just, if you have tubeless you'll know about these, they're, they're the best thing ever. Um, you can ride along with like nine, like nine of these in your tire and your tire's still going. They're just the best. So I always take this and I take a spare pack of, of darts as well. I'll take some cable ties because they're super useful and super lightweight. And I've got some uh, spare spokes specific for my wheel as well in case I needed to replace a spoke. Um, I've never had to do that. Two tire levers. Oh yeah, more darts. I always take a multi-tool that has a chain link breaker on it. I think that's so important. Um, on the underside of it, I don't know if you can see, I have two quick links taped to the wing of this chain breaker, so I've always, I've always got some quick links as well. Um, this thing, yeah, I love this thing. I always take it. The main thing is going to be flats, obviously. Um, having a chain link is so easy to take and a broken chain can completely ruin your trip and it's just so easy to fix so I don't go on a single ride without a chain without a chain link now because I had one ride where I broke a chain and had to walk home in the middle of nowhere and it was just the worst um, you just can't like jimmy it to work without a chain link um, or chain link breaker the spokes I mean do you need to do you need to take spare spokes I mean probably not it's pretty unlikely same thing with like a some people will get like their derailleur hanger. I don't have that. I couldn't find it online. I would just bend it and jimmy it to work if I needed to. Um, so I'll, yeah, I will stuff as much of that as I can fit in here, which is most of it generally. 
um, this thing. I mean, this is the thing you really want instantly available. So I would often actually put this somewhere like super close up on the bike so I can try and dart a flat as quick as possible. But yeah, I'll like stuff some of these in here. Um, the spokes won't bend in there, so the spokes will go like with the tent, tent poles, will go in with all the long, straight, skinny stuff. I will chuck some of these in. Um, yeah, more darts. I think last time I managed to fit this in. Oh, I don't think so, actually. Maybe I got this in. No. So this will put somewhere else on the bike. But you can get a good amount of stuff in one of these. It's sealed. It's on the bottom of the bike. Um, and then there's tech. Um, <clears throat> I tend to carry a lot of tech. That's because I like filming stuff compulsively all the time and annoying people. It surprises people how much I actually film on my iPhone. They're amazing tools. Um, like the stabilization's amazing. You can film in 4K. You've got like a huge amount of storage space straight off the bat. You could I film so many trips just with that, and I like amaze myself how little I'll get my DSLR out. But it is always great to have like some proper camera stuff. So that's what I take. Um, I can sort of get it into the frame bag, but um, for the Copico, I took like a hip pack, which I'll get and show you. So for the whole Copico, I carried my DSLR on this hip pack that I wore around my waist. Um, I also put fit my drone in there. So I took the drone and I think I got like two or three drone shots. Was it worth it? Maybe. That is a tiny drone. DSLR, yeah, that was worth it. Um, do you need to take that stuff? No, you definitely don't. Take your iPhone, film on that. Get good at holding your phone one-handed like this, which is what I do, and filming. Um, get real familiar with the controls. Um, filming on the bike is all about... Um, opportunistically capturing stuff you can't go back and take a shot again often because you need to make progress so you're just trying to capture stuff as it happens so the iPhone's perfect for that because you can fill you can pick it up um, that button that camera button like I I pull this up click that it's filming straight away and it's you can set it so it remembers your settings so it starts videoing straight away it starts with the highest uh, 4K and 60 frames per second. That's honestly how I capture most of my cycling stuff, just because by the time you stop and get your DSLR out, you've you've either missed what's happening or you just it just slows your progress down so much that you just can never be bothered, particularly if you're cycling with your mates. They don't want to stop while you get out the drone or stop while you get out your DSLR, so... So your water is going to go in here. Um, you're going to really struggle. This frame bag is pretty big. Um, and even using like the most bottom two of these, I really struggle to fit a bottle in here and a bottle in here. And for ages I didn't. But on the Copico I did because I needed to. And what it means is that the, the bottle ends up pushing up on here and here. I mean, you see how tight it is, like, it's really, really hard to fit, so you do what you can. It has a pretty large frame bag, so your toolkit, toolkit's going under there. I can't be bothered putting on the bottle cages at the moment. I have these ones that you put on here. I often put a full water bottle in there. I'll just show you putting those on. This, this sort of nook here. The straps are going to go on in here, and it just gets like this. The real estate on your bars gets so limited, but um, yeah, you can fit a whole, whole bottle in like that. I will often chuck um, chain lube like in here or something. I can't do it with one hand. There we go. Chain lube in there or something. I've got two of them, so the other one I'll often put food, sunscreen, 
whatever. So it does leave this whole bag here, so like I say, that is going to have tent poles, tent pegs, any other parts of your tool kit you can't fit in, so I'll put, I'll end up putting like tubes in there, way down the back. I'll often put a lot of, um, a lot of food in there as well. Um, I'll show you the drone. Uh, yeah, so that's my tiny wee drone in a case, which can fit straight in here as well. Um, I'll always have in here is where my dynamo comes in. So that is the uh, dynamo hub here connecting there and runs all the way up, comes through. It will supply this light on my aero bars, which I don't think I can be bothered putting on at the moment, but I like this one because it has like a, um, a hole for the stuff to come through and then I've got a USB converter there so I can charge stuff. Um, and then I'll often put my battery bank in here and it can charge the battery bank. I have a I had a ridiculously huge 30,000 milliamp hour one, but I don't have it anymore. Uh, it was confiscated at the airport, so that is now, I need to get a new one of those, but I'll often, yeah, put tech stuff in there. So I think those are the main things. Um, there are always gonna be little bits and pieces you can end up adding and subtracting, and it really depends on you you're going to find you rapidly run out of space. And it seems when you look at the bikes loaded up that people have heaps of space, but you're going to run out super quick. So here's some things that I have forgotten before and I really regretted um, big time. The first one. Jandals. On my first bike packing trip, I didn't bring alternative shoes to wear apart from my cycling shoes. And if you're like a bike packing hardcore racer and you're riding for 20 hours a day and sleeping in your cycling kit on the side of the road, yeah, fine, you don't need these. But for people who are just doing it normally and camping, having to walk around in your cycling shoes at camp is just the worst. And having your like feet free in like something like these, these are the ones I actually had on the Copico. I lost one of them. One of the riding buddies uh, gave me one of these, and yeah, I still got them. I strap them to the outside of my bike, I think most people do. So get rubber ones, strap them, just get really cheap ones, doesn't matter. Then if they fall off, doesn't matter. Um, second thing, a microfiber towel. On my first trip, I also forgot a towel. Um, I was like, oh, it'll be fine, I'll drip dry. No. <laughs> Being able to, most of the campsites you'll stay at will have showers. Well, you should choose ones that do. Or you swim in the sea or something, if you live in New Zealand. Um, don't forget a microfiber towel. Honestly, trying to dry yourself off um, by just drip drying is the absolute worst after a long day of cycling. Um, third thing. Get yourself some straps. These are ones that you use to like strap your um, bike to uh, like carriers and stuff to bike racks. Um, you can strap so much more to your bike and you will end up doing that. Um, one of the most common issues but I, th I see like new people have is that you've got all the space and so you fill it up with everything you actually need to save quite a bit of space for food um, you're going to eat an amazing amount of food and it's another mistake that i made early on was taking too much which is fine but not having any space to put food is actually quite stressful when you walk out like arms full of like coca-cola and lollies and all sorts of stuff from like a dairy but you've got nowhere to put it i've tried taking little packable backpacks before but I actually, I hate wearing them and I never use them. I just think have enough space on your bike. 
in your frame bag. Um, yeah, putting stuff in your back pockets is really handy. Lights. Um, everyone's different on the light front. I have a dynamo light, which you definitely don't need. I think most people bike pack in summer. In reality, no one wants to go bike packing in winter. In New Zealand, it gets dark at like 9.30 at night in the middle of summer. There isn't going to be that many people that are riding in the dark, unless you're a, like, a, like a hardcore bike packing racer person. So yeah, it's actually quite a small period that you're going to be riding in the dark. For, for the Copico, there was literally only one day where we needed lights, and it was the last half an hour of our big day through the timber trail. I don't think you need to take hardcore lights. You don't need a dynamo hub. The battery packs these days are more than good enough. Um, unless you're going super off-grid and you want to be able to charge stuff, yeah, I, I think it's overkill, and I don't know if I would get one again, but I have one now, and it is nice. Um, I think a head torch does pretty well. Do you need a hardcore cycling one? I don't think so. I think the more important thing is having like a, a rear one um, for safety purposes. Unless you are planning on doing a decent portion of nighttime riding, then yep, suss out proper lights, absolutely. But for most people, I think you're not going to use it that much. And the last thing I've forgotten before, um, which really came back to bite me in the ass, um, quite literally, was chamois cream. Um, Everyone's got different ways they manage their backsides. If you're sat on a bike seat long enough, you will get a sore bum. It's kind of just part of it. And you do train up and get used to it. So I think if before you go on a really long one, make sure you've done, you know, like five, six, seven hour rides before so that you know what it's going to be like. Oh yeah, the last thing that I've forgotten before is one of these, a cycling hat which I sort of wear, but not all the time. Um, if you're riding in like rain for eight hours, having water constantly streaming into your eyes is so damn annoying. Um, I really regretted on the Copico not having one of these, um, just for my eyes and my, and my glasses, I just got so, the, the like three wet days we had, my eyes were just so sore and gritty at the end of it. Um, yeah, so those would be my things. Bring jandals, uh, bring a small towel, um, bring chamois cream, bring straps to add extra stuff to your bike, and bring one of these, all right. Uh, that's roughly how I pack my bike. Obviously, there's, there's always more. There's always little bits and pieces. I've probably forgotten stuff. Medical kit. Um, take some stuff in case you fall off. I think that's really the only thing you need is to be able to bandage yourself a little bit if that happens. So I don't think taking a whole bag full of different drugs is necessary, really. Maybe take some paracetamol and ibuprofen. Or take a couple of bandages. So hopefully gives you some idea if it's your first bike packing trip do just do a weekend ride do an overnighter i think a lot of the anxiety i've found has been by myself i think it's really a lot less anxiety provoking if you go with a mate and have someone with you all of that anxiety about what will i do if i have a mechanical i can't fix what will i do if i get lost what will i do if i get really cold a lot of that is so much less um you know, anxiety provoking if you have a mate with you. So I would definitely go with someone for your first trip, choose a manageable distance, you'll love it. Don't go in winter, go in summer when it's really warm and nice and you're not gonna freeze overnight. All right guys, thanks for watching my video about how to pack your bike to go bike packing. Um, this is just how I do it, everyone else will do it differently. Um, make sure you do a dummy pack before you go and you go and actually ride the bike to get a feel about weight distribution and stuff because honestly weight distribution is really important um, it's going to feel really weird and different if you're, doing, if you're riding off road for the first time um, the bike is going to feel super weird over rough terrain so do some dummy packing don't make the first time you pack it be in like the hotel the night before you go on some kind of event it'll be so stressful um, alright guys see you later Bye. Stay out.